So welcome everyone to this uh, sixth uh, uh, webinar in the, in the Young Scientist Program webinar series. For those that are just arriving today, so this uh, webinar series started in May and it's a, a kickoff event for the uh, annual UPAB Congress that will be uh, will happen together with the Brazilian Society of Biochemistry and Brazilian Society of Biophysics that will uh, take place in October this year. And uh, to warm up for this main event, we have uh, devised this uh, webinar uh, series uh, in substitution of a presential Young Scientist program that would uh, take place if we had the presential event that is a uh, program uh, supported by UPAB uh, where uh, young scientists from all over the world are put together to, to show their research and, 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 uh, uh, and uh, integrate with leading scientists in, in, in different fields of biochemistry and uh, biophysics. So we had to adapt for this virtual format and in, in, in uh, this presential event was substituted for a webinar series where the, this uh, young and uh, scientists will present their work uh, along uh, several weeks. So in total, we have 32 young scientists from 14 different countries of the world. And these meetings, these webinars are taking place every uh, other Wednesday at 2 p.m. in Brasilia time. And uh, this is the sixth uh, webinar. And before we, we move to it, I'd ju just like to uh, make a uh, announcement to everyone that we are that there are still uh, openings for uh, applications for UPAB fellowships to cover the registration of uh, PhD uh, students to participate in the in, in the virtual UPAB Congress in October. So this. Uh, the, the, you can see these um, uh, fellowships are available from candidates from uh, developing countries, which are listed in the in our website, and the the application date has been extended to July 26. So we encourage all of you to apply to to, to apply and to uh, you know send this information and invite your colleagues to apply as well. And you can find further information in the UPAB. Uh, 2020 website. Uh, moving to our uh, session, so we, we have this uh, exciting session uh, where, that will have the presence of uh, Dr. Eduardo Peroso as the, our, our, our key speaker in the session, and, and three uh, young scientists from Argentina, from uh, uh, Chile and the uh, United States, and uh, from Brazil. So every so Dr. Uh, so the, Dr. Eduardo Peroso will have a 15 minutes to, to, to his talk, and the and the, sh the young scientists will be short talks, short 15 minutes minute talks, and everyone can make questions either at the end of each talk, either orally or can write your question in the question and answer tab. So we obviously invite everyone to make their your questions orally, but otherwise you can also write them down. So without further ado, we're going to move to the to the start the session, and I'm going to just make a quick presentation from Dr. Eduardo Peroso. Uh, Dr. Peroso, he's uh, originally from Venezuela, where he uh, did his his undergrad in biology. Then uh, he moved to uh, United States for uh, for his PhD in physiology, and then a postdoc in membrane biophysics both at the University of California in uh, Los Angeles. Well, Dr. Perzo now is a, pro a full professor at the uh, University of Chicago in the, in the, he's a professor of biochemistry and molecular biology in, this, in the Institute of Biophysic, Biophysical Dynamics, where uh, he has been in the University of Chicago for uh, 15 years now. Well, he's a, he's a leader in the, in the area of biophysics of um, uh, mem membrane proteins. Uh, he's a very, his, his work is very cited. He has over uh, 100,000 citations. Uh, and his research aims, and is, uh, aims to understand 
the molecular mechanisms involved in the transduction of different forms of energy into protein motion. In particular, he's interested in studying the molecular mechanisms of ion channel gating. Uh, and this, for this, this, as this involves the dissection of the, the structure and dynamics of membrane proteins using high resolution spectroscopic and functional methods. And uh, he will talk about this today uh, when he will address, I think, the studies of the mechanisms underlying uh, gated ion channels controlled by mechanical forces in artific using artificial membrane systems and mammalian cells. So without further ado, I will invite uh, Dr. Peroso to start his presentation. And thank you very much for accepting the, this invitation and for, having, and, and for joining us today. It is uh, my pleasure um, to be here. Thank you very much for not only the invitation, the opportunity to speak with you and to be in touch or in contact with all my uh, Brazilian friends and some non Brazilian as well. <laughs> Uh, um, so let me share, share screen. And if you, if you see this, can you hear me well? Yes. And do you see the main, the main screen screen? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. Uh, um, what I, I'm going to, I'm going to talk to you about is a, a one, two key areas of research in, in my lab. And first, uh, I will just uh, acknowledge uh, the people who already did the work. Um, this is mostly the work, work of um, a uh, Bar Barry, who uh, is, is um, now an expert in, expert in uh, cryo microscopy, um, and he's been working uh, um, for the last four or five, five years on uh, finding con conditions to uh, obtain high resolution of, of uh, uh, mixative channels em embedded in the layer. And you'll, you'll see what is important. And of course, we have a number of number of um, uh, additional collaborators in the lab and outside, which I acknowledge here. Um, mostly uh, Navid, Navid Babi, who did all of the electrophysiology that, we, that I'm going to talk to you about, about today. Um, oh, okay. So, <clears throat> do I kindly uh, introduce me, introduce me by uh, pointing out the, uh, some interest in, in my group have the process of um, um, tunnel gating. In a, in a way, the stand ion channel gate, gating, uh, uh, at least this one one way in which to put it is is to, is to look at it as a sense of energy transduction. You know, how does different forms of energy lead to conformational changes, which ultimately express themselves at the molecular level as, as protein motion? So you could you could have um, the trans transduction of say binding energy energies um, into protein protein mode. Uh, we have a number of number of examples here in my uh, we can look to uh, something that, that we've worked on a number of years, and one of the uh, uh, speakers going to talk about it, which, which uh, would be um, electrical uh, voltage trans <clears throat> again, again into motion. Um, but I want, what I want to talk to you more, most about it is the issue of how do we transduce perhaps some of the most, most basic uh, forms of, of uh, energy signaling which to do with mechanical sensation or force and tension trans tension transfer. Okay, but here here is the issue. Um, first of all, obviously you be ubiquitous in in you know, biological systems. Uh, the reason why you're 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 here now is the, is the reason reason why you're touching the mouse, mouse uh, or the phone phone uh, you know leads you to check the web while I'm speaking to you. Um, uh, but and, and in the range of, of uh, energies is actually, actually remarkable um, um, in that it spans um, a, a very, very subtle, very, very sophisticated ways of obtaining, obtaining signaling from teeny tiny amounts of, amounts of force to all the way to, to no system, which is essentially when you get you get a hat into your finger. Um, all, all of those, those lead to similar filler for uh, of, of, of transduction in the nervous system. Um, and so the range of energy, is, as I said, is enormous. It goes from sort of faint sound, which has to do with about, you know, 10 to, to the minus four ton per square meter here, um, all the way to to build instruments like uh, ch uh, change of in a uh, press, press uh, which could be, you know, several orders of magnitude, or eight, nine of magnitude higher. 
uh, to 10 to the 5 newtons per, per meter. Um, um, now, from, from the point, point of view, he, we have a, 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 an interesting problem. Eduardo, Eduardo. Yeah. Yes. It's Antonio. Let me interrupt you, interrupt you just a little bit. There is some sort of echo in your audio. Yes. Are you using two uh, two screens or two mics, something like that, or just one, one, one microphone? I could I could I could look to it, but uh, let me see. Hey, Ancho. There's an echo. Why if, were you saying? Uh, yeah, if it's too bothersome, um, let's see. In... Sorry about that, man. But uh, well, um, let's see if we can um, just have it like improved a little bit. How about now? Can you hear me? Well, it sounds better now. Let's yeah. see how it goes. It's and I, I turn it on and off. Unfortunately, I, I just my only microphone, uh, which is associated with the camera. It's better now. Is it better now? Okay. Okay. Let me go back to sharing my screen. You see this? You see this? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. So I was was mentioning that uh, from an evolutionary point of view, it is actually actually um, not a tri trivial thing to um, evolve a system that that actively transduces for signaling or more biological reasons, uh, force over, over back backgrounds, and 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 the, and the reason is that um, in principle, just like with temperature. Molecules should be mechanical sense. If you have a, a, a probe that is small enough or forces that are uh, large enough to, pr to produce a conf confirmation of the protein, those, those, those systems are going to be mechanical mechanical sense. That is not the point. The point, the point in the functional, functional um, aspect of, of, of choosing that energy become, become important in terms of signaling. signaling. And so I give you two exam examples. You, know, you can actually one of the best known voltage channels, the shaker uh, uh, potassium voltage dependent channel, um, and apply uh, uh, forces in the in it, in it under conditions, under patch hand conditions, and that will change more or less the open probability. But that doesn't mean at all that shaker is, is a mechanical sensor. It is still a voltage dependent channel with a uh, uh, under experimental conditions, you can modulate that both dependence by mechanical means. Okay, by the same token, you can actually take a um, atomic force microscope cantilever, fix it to a given protein, and apply enough force to separate things one by one, which which are in individual hydrogen bond, hydrogen bonds or salt bridges, and that and that is. Uh, for spectro spectroscopy, you actually unfold fold and, and reprotein by by means of force. Does that does that mean mean that that is mechanical sensitivity from every point of view? Of course not. You just have in, enough enough force to unfold the protein. Also, is um, a strategy worth studying. Now, now with the, the concepts that I'm going to deal with here, um, um, you know, let me establish those. You know. The functional properties of sensor channel uh, rely on the fact that the open probability will be proportional to the amount of force that they choose. And the types of fo force that they transduce are a, a key um, question in, in the field. Uh, uh, I'll go into details in, in, a, in a brief moment. But basically, basically, you get something like this. You get on this, you get on the pump condition. You can actually actually pass a uh, bacteri bacterial ferroplast once you once you apply trans by layer, layer forces or pressure, you are going to modify the physical the physical by layer, and in the sense essential means that these channels can can set that physical state. As you increase the trans by, by layer pressure, then you can you can see here the open probability in, increases so you get to close to one. Um, but it also mean, means that uh, there is some sort of, sort of safety range in which you can apply safely apply tension forces and nothing was going to happen. And this is very important uh, to avoid uh, random firing of these ion channels because of uh, noisy forces in, in the environment, okay? 
So one way to conceptualize that is very simple. You have a little gate um, with some, some, some sort of lever here, over here. Uh, and then there's a spring. Spring is linking the four force that uh, gate. And being at the spring constant, associated to that spring, uh, um, depends the degree, degree to which this is mechanosensitive sensitive or not. One, one more sort of sort of me mechanistic is the fact that, that uh, one of the properties of this mechanosensitive is, is that the uh, uh, cross-channel area of, of the channel varies depending on the, the fun functional of, of that molecule. That is, if in the closed state you have cross-sectional area, and in the open state it's a different cross-sectional area. If the cross-sectional area of the open state is, is larger, it means that, that in tension will in will promote opening, and then deep tension will promote closing. Um, and, and that is defined by this by this uh, simple equation, equation which is uh, the, uh, the the tension itself. The larger the delta delta here, yeah, the larger the the mechanosensitivity of the system. System. How do we apply apply this? And this is again again one of the ongoing questions questions in the field. Uh, which in, in, over the last few years have decanted in two major areas. The possibility is, as, as I said, and this is sort of the, the topic of, of today, that force in the itself, in, in the bilayer, uh, is sensed by the channel. Uh, and in that sense, the, the, the mechanical channels that are, and that's, that's called the force from lipid um, hypothesis. Um, and in that sense, those types of channels are sensors to the physical state of the lipid membrane. Alternatively, and this is something that people thought was going to be widespread early on, you could have linkages to the to the satellite matrix, either internal cytoskeletal or or extra matrix, either or or, um, and that's called force force and phenomenon uh, um, hypothesis. For which for which we now one bona bona fide the uh, the most member. Uh, is, is a trio, uh, which is which is responsible for um, kind of say, uh, hearing uh, a mechanical kind of sensation in, in uh, insects and arthropods, NOMC. Once, once we focus on the force from, from lipid mechanical uh, action, we, we, we can look into what happens in membrane when we apply a trans bilayer uh, uh, pressures, and you can divide that, that into options. One, one, one key, as the membrane, the membrane differs. Uh, two events, two events. One is that you get that you get what is called curvature, curvature definition frustration. That is, is a the contrast between the natural curve, curvature layer and that imposed posture uh, by this by these forces. Um, um, and we'll show that in a second, a second in more more detail. And the one is that as you, you deform the bilayer, the bilayer and, and it apply uh, a, a transfer pressures, the tension, which is the low forces, increase, and they do have a, a reduction in the cross sectional area per lipid, which then means that the, the membrane expands, right? Membranes are liquids, and so they're non compressible liquids, and so they don't expand that much. Their range of expansion is limited. But that means that even small amounts of expansion lead to very large changes in tension. Um, so one possibility is that as you expand, the membrane thins, as you contract, the membrane uh, thickens. And that will lead to something called hydrophobic mismatch, which is the um, difference between the footprint, the hydroph hydrophobic print of a, mem of a membrane, a membrane product in the membrane and, and thickness of the membrane itself. Self. If you have thin membranes and the footprint of, of a um, protein, then, then proteins themselves selves, uh, com compensate uh, mismatch match by in their helices flat, plane of the bilayer. Bi bi As if you uh, invade a give, given membrane into a thicker bilayer, bi helices will stand, stand up and it tend to be more, more sort of perpendicular to uh, the plane layer. So those are the two um, event, events on here. Um, one way to analyze those, those quantitatively is to consider the, the fact that a resting bilayer, bilayer 
Um, can you see my can you see my uh, mouse here? cursor? Yes. Okay. Um, so so the membrane membrane from profile that rest looks like this. It's a little it's a little electric, and it has um, a sharp repulsion. I mean, a sharp attraction in in uh, the points of intrusion of the head groups to the acyl acyl chains. And this has to do with the, with the dye potential and the lo local statics um, associ associated with but also also has all repulsions due to the van der Waals mismatch between highly mobile ACE chains okay so in a uh, hydrophobic mismatch uh, scenario this profile compresses or expands in the in this direction the y axis whereas in uh, curvature deformations, this profile um, is modified in the z in the um, x-axis, so it flips like this. Uh, um, this is an example of what, what, what can happen uh, with uh, uh, curve restriction itself. Um, so we have a homogeneous made of a, of a single form. Um, um, it is significantly for the, for the, in the internal phosphate layer, whether that, that phosphate uh, geometry is, is compatible with the flat, flatness of the, of the bilayer. In other words, if, if you have, um, if, you, if you consider the issue of, of the, the cross area of the head group versus cross section or projection of, of the scenes, that ratio issue will be the predictor of the overall shape of a bilayer. So, so classical example is that if it be like fossil choline, uh, for which the, the cross area of the head group is proportional, it's only about the same size as, as the uh, cross sectional area of the acyl chain, we'll, we'll have general shape of, shape of the uh, cylinder. And, and a pack cylinders in the plane of the plane of the body, the body is fairly flat, flat. Okay. If on the if on the other, I mean sorry, it will be like this, this, this be, um, this will be this will be a PC bilayer and and the bilayer flat. If you if you on the other hand have uh, um, groups that are uh, have a wider area that the acyl chain chains, as in the case of um, you know, you know lysophospholipid or even any of the detergents that we today. Um, in that case, you have an inverted cone, and then you have positive frustration uh, and positive curvature. In the other end of the spectrum. Will have a phospholipid like phosphatidylethanolamine, which has a relatively small head group and a larger cross sectional area in the projection of the acyl chains, and that will have an inverted or negative curvature and negative um, curvature frustration. Okay, so let me then let me then into um, the, the the question at hand. The challenge we are working on or or talking today. Um, one of the two, two major, major members of the prokaryotic mechanical channels. The reason, the reason why, we, why we pick it is because A, A we have extensive amount of, of astronomy, extensive amount of channel information and, and dynamic information that, that paints a very interesting picture of how these types of channels would work. Um, the first uh, structure came out as, as a crystal structure in the early 2000s uh, from the lab of Dr. Rees. And it showed a beautiful structure that lo looks like hep it is a ho homo hair, um, where um, the, the, the transmembrane segments, there's three membrane segments with an external oriented enter terminal, which was the sorter at the time, and a very large, large seismic domain that, that looks like a hollow balloon um, and is forms, forms, forms uh, a position, a position with helical. And, and, and uh, sandwiches. Um, they link to the transmembrane segments to a kink part of transmembrane transmembrane three. All right, All right. Interestingly, if you look at the look at the stress of this uh, uh, structure, you will also also see uh, hydrophobic cavities, which presumably and has been been shown more recently uh, uh, directly interact with the lipids. Um, so. This led to, to and the old shape of the projection of the footprint of the, the putative print of the, of the transparent segment in there led to, to a number of uh, models and a number of hypotheses of how tension might actually trigger uh, conformational changes in uh, MSCS. 
And one of the ideas was that because of this angular orientation of the helices, the bilayers actually bend to account for that. And this can be accounted, accounted for if we assume that the, that the chambrane segments and the, and the bilayer interaction will occur, will occur exactly along hairpin, this is TM, TM2 hairpin. Okay, now I want you to hold, hold that, that for a second because I'm going to show that this is, is not only misleading, that is actually, actually actually wrong. Uh, and I will introduce an, another, which was um, one of my favorites. This, this particular was was, was made by, by Varesquez uh, when she was at a grass lab, uh, low and far away. Uh, um, and the idea is as follows. If we take the concepts of curvature frustration, as I mentioned before, and, and we start with a bilayer made of, made of um, you know, a curvature uh, type type uh, lipids, we can then can then try to modify the uh, pure profile incorporation of cone cones lipids, and in this case, the phosphatidylcholine seem to be a be a uh, case. It's a beautiful experiment in which we can, can actually apply tension by normal normal means, just force across, across the bilayer. And if you do that, that let's say by you know, 60 millimeters, millimeters or mercury, you, you get a, a, a sort of a transient uh, desensitized type trace for opening of MSCS. Um, you can re release the, the, the trans bilayer pressure and the channels all will close and stay close until you either apply more uh, pressure or you can incorporate lysophospholipid in the bath. The lysophospholipids will then only incorporate it in one of the leaflets of the bilayer, and slowly but surely you, rec you recruit uh, by increasing the increase in the tank uh, via original lysopc. If a single channel profile, profile this chemical uh, or, or local cur curvature in the they are, they are identical to those uh, a generator or you know, those uh, activated by their pressures, which mean, means that uh, by incorporating lysol ly 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 phosphorus, uh, we, we can, can actually prom promote uh, openings that are in this distinguished from those uh, physiologically uh, relevant openings. Okay, okay. Um, so, so the other piece of informa information that I introduced to you um, is the fact you can get mutants on, on this particular channel that promote opening and crystallize, crystallize um, in, um, in Pan8, uh, the, the group of um, uh, Ian Booth and collaborators, collaborators led to the determina determination what it seemed to be an expanded, expanded opening uh, conf confirmation transition in MSC. And that, that actually matches more or less, more or less predicted uh, PR-based predictions, uh, predicted structure from, from Valeria's uh, experiment, experiments. And the basic idea that, as, as suggested earlier, these helices flatten towards the, um, the plane of the bilayer and opens up an internal cavity here, okay? There are a number of issues uh, associated with this which led to two uh, competing hypotheses. One, that the gating was simply a consequence of the change of the, the interactions between this hairpin with the um, um, poor line helix, which will be the TM3. And the other one was that uh, the lipids themselves act as ligands, um, and this ligand is reversible, this ligand binding is reversible due to the tension uh, effects. And indeed, um, you can do mass spec, spec as experiments where you extract the channel, the channel what comes with it, uh, and a large amount, amount of radius state uh, phosphor come along, along uh, the right, which suggests that, yes, that these cavities are, in, are in, indeed filled with lipids. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So now let me take a, a small door and introduce to, to you a, a psychologist. Uh, 101 on cognitive bias. And the, re the reason I tell you this is because, because we can be, uh, uh, we, everybody in the field could be, be sort of into thinking certain ways if 
there's a number of, of uh, conditions to the experiments. Either the experimental data is complete or the interpretation is biased as much. Uh, uh, and so the, the reason I'm telling you this is because, is because we decided a uh, few, uh, few the, the crystal structures are as useful as useful are may not be a proper proper rotation of the channel channel in the bilayer. Um, and so at rating my lab started working with the transition towards cryo microscopy, started working working on incorporating MSCS in, into uh, lipid nanodisks of, of the transition. And the thing that I want to like to you is, is the fact that even though the, though the crystal structure only shows uh, up to, to this location, in fact, there are about 28 or 27, 28 residues that are unaccounted for towards the end terminal of the channel. More importantly, if you look at the uh, crystal lattice in the crystal structures, uh, all of the crystal contacts come from the cytoplasmic balloon which is by far the most stable, stable of, the, of the molecule. So long story, story short, after incorporating the channel, channel Barad, Barad got a series of remarkable images um, where, where he actually solved, solved this structure in SES in, in, in lipid. And there were, were a number of interesting, if, if, perhaps in surprises, uh, the very well defined uh, down to 3.1 angstrom from uh, Russian. And as, as typical for in proteins, the, the core of the proteins far better resolved than the parole um, read regions, including this uh, N -term, N term. So what are the surprises? The first thing that happened is that this N, N term is now part of the trans transmembrane, and it actually extends more or less from, from the, the bilayer all the way up into this less less defined fine uh, sort of hook uh, that that. Uh, uh, dives back into the into the bar, uh, the uh, uh, cellular limit uh, of the of the man, right? Um, um, so this whole new uh, uh, main is on, only present uh, in uh, uh, in a lipid bar, here, and it it appears to unfold completely when when you uh, solubilize the uh, in the third, <clears throat> um, and as such. It makes this very large, large uh, kitty, <clears throat> which, which is probably water field up to, to up to this point. Um, however, the rest of the structure is essentially identical to that of the, the crystal structure, and we interpret this under resting conditions in the absence of any external tension. Um, we uh, in, interpret this to be the actual closed state of the channel. Okay. Um, here is a, a, a closer look on that, what happens. If we get, if we get rid of the nano disk, uh, we see that either this um, new part, new part uh, of the N-terminus comes this pseudo glue hook uh, back into the membrane. And interestingly enough, it includes a tryptophan anchoring um, uh, residue, residue been seen in most, most member, member proteins interact at, at the in interface of the lipid and water in, uh, uh, edges. Uh, <clears throat> okay. so, so what kind of functional ro role this uh, region have? And this is something that, that, that we're into on and off were conflicting uh, uh, conflicting results in the literature. <clears throat> and um, if, you if you take wild type MSCS and, and incorporate it into a lipid body, carry out, carry out, pump, uh, uh, a press, a press pump, what you see is an, is an action sort of a, um, um, curve for all probability. And the, oh, this is current actually, actually, is, it mirrors the open, pro open probability. And when you return the, the, the ramp, then you get a, a closing or deactivation. Um, if, if you do, do the in the presence of the N -term terminal histar, the hist histar form uh, the stab stabilizing globe on, on top of the uh, structure, which then inhibits opening. This is how the structure will change. But then if you in, um, use a targeted protease in between the N-terminus and this histone, 
and in vivo, get rid of it, you start activating uh, again. So in other words, this is a clear indication that in the transition between the closed and the open state, this region must undergo a really large conformation of chicken chain. Um, for kicks, we, we all um, eliminate, eliminated the new part of the, the entry terminus of segment, segment one, one, and then showing the absence of that, that domain, channel doesn't open at all. We have a structure. We then went on and, and looked at the, uh, how sen sensitive it is to fu functional and tension detection to MSCS. And did uh, an uh, tested by uh, um, downshock assays, which were actually see what the functional consequence of this is to the cell. And we, we see that there are a num number of residues that are, that are significantly affected in, into this region. Um, uh, finally affected as a loss as a loss function uh, mutation stations even uh, if you put an ala, put an ala. and not not certainly those are, are both in the periphery in the membrane sort of interface interface and also in the interface facial uh, inter subunit uh, region that interacts with each other, each other so that point points to really important ro role this new uh, region the most remarkable remar remarkable what on the other hand, co comes looking at the location of, of the nanodisc, where the membrane is, is in relationship to the new, new um, larger, more complete structure. And to our surprise, uh, it turns out that the membrane, the nanodisc itself, is now off in our expectations by about one of the leaflets. It's a, it's a good uh, 13 to 14 angstroms off to what we and everybody else thought. This is very, conse very consequent because the, the tension, tension and the force application is an in footprint of the channel, we completely reassess. So let me go on example. So if the crystal structure are as stop, if you, if you do predict the bilayer lo locate, nothing, nothing controversial to see that the, 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 the predictions that the, the footprint channel is sim similar to uh, where the transmembranes and segments, there's no uh, no surprises there. This is experimentally, that's, that's not, the bilayer in fact, fact is upwards. Now you have not only longer transmembrane segment than one, but you also have the, this um, N-terminal uh, pseudo-globular inter interfacial uh, domain that uh, anchors the top part, part of the chain and stabilizes stabilize the entire structure. Um, as, as I just for for the for fix, we we uh, truncated that, that physically eliminated this this region and made a construct that look check the crystal structure solve the, solve the structure and to our surprise the nodes stays stays in the location even even though there is no um, amount there's no protein here to here to stabilize the outer part so this so this is an inter property, we think, of the closed close state of the barrier, resting state of the barrier, and it informs us on where the transition to or the um, transaction of lipid forces may be taken. All right, so we went on and saw a, a variety of uh, structures for MSCS under different lipid conditions. So uh, our structure was done with the nano disk. Um, in with the presence of the N terminal histag, which is the most stable one for obvious reasons. We, when we got rid of the N terminus, we got a very an identical structure, slightly lower resolution. Then modify the nano nano to include only e equal bits, uh, and, and the location of, of the nano didn't change. Change all the structure in, in uh, DDM. And then the mice window is not, not as defined as the, the, the nanodisc, it's st still sizing the, the, the structure itself. Uh, um, this is without, without doubt, doubt uh, a new reality that the foot, footprint of here is in a, in a completely different place uh, as ex expected from the crystal structure. So we went on on an action. So is this, is this, this move, this, um, 
a, a temporary consequence of the, the operation of the membrane into this, this nanot. Um, and for that, we, we did uh, initial calculations using MD simulation, simulation uh, calculate the over, overall energy of the system if, if we, on purpose, move the, move the bilayer along the z-axis. And in reality, we found that, found that OS energy um, um, system occurred exa exactly at what the experimental till, uh, EM structure predicts, shows. Um, if, um, if we go away from, from that at the minima, the, the, there are uh, sharp increases in the profile. Um, um, and if you let the, the system relax, it all relaxes back to experimental value, which is the orange thing. Now, one of the most exciting results uh, that we, we saw in the high resolution structure that, that I just showed you um, comes to the fact that we find within the structure densities associated to uh, uh, lipids, phospholipids, and uh, perhaps other chains, uh, acyl chains here. Chains here. Um, so, so the clear density uh, as it, with a small small cap that has been that it is only because because these the, uh, um, structures stabilized by the, the nanotubes, and this we call the hook, hook lip lipid. The lipid itself comes in this cavity, uh, and inter interacts this the two two transformations with the very tree top of the TTM three tree, which is the pore. Okay. The second uh, event is that the pore itself filled with lipids. So these lipids, which we call the pore lipids, and the pore lipids, lipids are less well defined. We see the is of change. We don't, we don't know if this is for, for sure, sure a phospholipid, but it's more of like a phospholipid. Uh, those um, um, li li literally block block the uh, acts uh, to the permeation path, path, and issues issues of water permeability um, are completely rare moot, uh, moot point. When all the pore lipids, there's absolutely, absolutely no water in the low, low dietary surrounding the narrowest part of the, of the channel. Okay, so this so this this station shows that if we get, get rid of the uh, pore lipid, bit, you increase um, the water penetration up to a pore point, and if we get rid of both lip lipids, then water can fully uh, permeate the channel, even though the lining of the walls of the permeating path are uh, hydrophobic. <clears throat> and you can see that better here. When you have no lipid, there's a lot of water. When you have the hook lipid only, water gets to it only the the, um, uh, the waiting uh, port, port, most hydrophobic region of, region of the pore, the narrowest part. part. And, and when you have, have all uh, lipids in the pore, then there's no water to be found. So, so let's go to hook lipid. Let me show you show you the, the binding. <laughs> so, so the binding for the hook lipid seems to be nice by, by and with this is I, either a phosphatidyl ethanol or a, a phosphatidyl being present in, in uh, uh, native membranes. And and it comes, uh, we didn't, didn't do any to incorporate extra lipid. It's all tightly bound, bound, it comes through uh, a sort of uh, purification step away from uh, so sort of to final purification. <laughs> um, the most, most interesting is that there are clear, clear rates that stabilize either by a uh, salt bridge, bridge in the R88 or the tires in 2027, uh, the phosphate group or the ethane uh, group in the phosphate calling, calling example that we have here. Um, this is this is electrostatic interactions. These are these are all um, Van der Waals Waals um, So so, just to to um, <clears throat> move ahead ahead, um, one of the things that things that we do was to uh, incorporate our new new structure into a layer by layer, and then computationally apply ten tension by a, a expanding the lipid by layer uh, uh, to changes in surface tension. Uh, and so interesting things happen. In the absence of this uh, li lipids, either the hook or the pore, pore lipid, <clears throat> there is a slight expansion on the perimeter of the molecule, but the channel never really opens. 
However, when you incorporate the hook lipids into the equation, uh, what happens is that not that this expansion is in, increased, is more efficient, but, but it also leads to a, an opening of the internal pore. So let me show you, let me show you in more details. So we, so we get our, um, the, the, the uh, progression of the in the op opening of the and the prog progression in the extension of the, of the per perimeter uh, um, in this of, of any, any lipid. <clears throat> The more linear in the ends of the hook lipid, it, it is significantly more, more efficient. Um, but, but the, the open, opening of the paper only happens significantly in, um, in the, the present hook lipid, which seems, seems to be the, the transductor of tension in the, the periphery into the pore. This is just with the way the uh, lipid acts. Uh, um, to transfer force, uh, either as you see, there are two options in, in one favor by using the disguising binding site and release and release that lipid, or or uh, by changing changing allosterically the conformation. Now, now, interestingly enough, and this is this is the only EVR data I'm going to show, gonna show um, for and for Anton's uh, um, sake. sake. Um, we had we had done for similar experiments since almost 15, 15 years, more than years ago, about fifteen years ago, uh, with Valeria Vasquez when when it was in the lab. And what what you see here is changes in um, accessibility to nickel EDDA for spin labels uh, position all along the TM1 and the N-terminus. And what we see is two things: one, that upon application of lysophospholipids in um, in um, liposomes, um, the top part of the molecule then reduces its access, access to water. Okay? okay, and we interpreted at that time, time test that the um, um, the N terminus becomes forms part of the inter, the TM TM one one. It flattens. It, it then stores the bilayer, bilayer opening uh, uh, the ch channel. And we can see that, that as a co consequence, the e, there is an in increase in the actually uh, two choke po points here, where we know now now the, the hook is present, and he, here where uh, the narrow, narrowest of the um, permeation is located. So, so this is a condition that while the channel expands and the enter comes part of the uh, M1, the door opens, and perhaps perhaps the the, the, the pore, pore lipid must leave. In order to, to, to lead to an increase in um, in, in uh, water permeation, so let me then close close by posing or 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 explaining this thing. A, a couple options that we put up. Uh, uh, we first show this, and then I'm going to discuss very recent data that came came out a few months ago <clears throat> from the from the lab of Waltz uh, that is that essentially favors um the, the uh, one one of the two options okay <clears throat> one option was that that as um the ten tension increases membrane and and terminals becomes part of part of the one this is not enough to affect the binding, binding of hook lipid um, um and it opens with a lipid lipid bound and somehow it, it rearranges the pore lipid so, so that it allows conscious so that's option, option number one the second possibility is that the lipid itself serves as a as a ligand, and when the initial initial conformation of change, the expansion of that I, that I mentioned before occurs, that destabilizes the binding side. The hook lipid leaves, and as the hook lipid leaves, it allows the uh, uh, the gate, the internal gate, to to okay. So, what Waltz and and Collapse found. With a very, very curved um, ex experimental vision here, what they did was it was to, to use similar system that I asked with uh, none of the, none of this required MSCS, uh, but they ch change the intention not by, by adding the lipid, but, but by by extracting the total amount of lipids bits in this using uh, a uh, cyclodex data cyclodextrin. And so beta CDD is well known to, to interact with memory and, and, and serve, serve as a tractor or an applicator of the lipids. 
into a known of, 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 the, of the bilayer. And because he could do that in both, in both sides of the, bile, of the nanodisc, that led to a, an increase in um, uh, tension. That you can see here and see here, there's a significant conformation, conformation change simply by looking by looking at the class from the end. This has very much to do to do predictions of opening. Um, and so with the uh, beta, beta cyclodextrins, you you see now the, there's a sharp change in the angle of reaction of TM1 and with the layer compared to the closed state state. But if you lead it, let it too long. Then it produce, produces something that relates to a, a non-conductive, um, the sensitized state, uh, with a different relations between the, the angle of the uh, TM1, TM2 herpes and the plane of the bilayer. In all cases, the bilayer remains at the top of the uh, interaction. So when they looked into the uh, whole lipid itself, um, this is a control, same result of us as us. But in the presence of beta cyclodextrin, dextrin, the lipid is gone. It means that the, the, the two options that I put, put before, this is the one, one that appears uh, favored experimentally. All right, all right. Let me summarize this. What I do now uh, uh, or, or today is, is a way of understanding the, the way raising uh, lipid by layers uh, the conformation of the transit in four sense uh, ion channels. And they're so, so intertwined with the way, way that mechanotransduction takes place. But I want to give leave you with a simple example. You know, the way as we consider a ribosome, a ribonucleoprotein enzyme. I think that we need to start think, thinking of force from force from force kind of sensors. As as hypopake ion channel channel where lipid is as important as important in conduction and conduction conduction as the protein itself itself. With that, with that, I leave you with the conclusions and I thank you very much for your for your time. Again, let me me acknowledge um, um, a uh, Barat Reddy, Nat Allen, uh, and and the rest of my lab, it, it, who participated in one well with this project. And with that, thank you very much. Thank you, Eduardo, very much for a great talk and, uh, and for sticking with the time. Uh, I'd like to open the, to ask if there are any questions. There is one question here from Gonzalo Ferreira. He has wrote in the question and answer. I wonder, it's a long question. I wonder if Gonzalo is around and he could make his question orally. We can activate. Please, this is Gonzalo Ferreira from Uruguay. Uruguay yes, here. precisely, from Uruguay, right. yeah. I'm not sure he's... Um... Anyway, good to see, to see you, man. man. Let, let's see, see, let me... <clears throat> yeah, uh, I think he's not here anymore. He's, well, he oh, has... I, I... Hello? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's here. He's here. He's here. Yes, I'm here. Uh, uh, First of all, uh, thanks, Eduardo. How are you, Eduardo? Very nice talk, and uh, Pablo, good to can, see can you. you excuse Thank me, you can you nice. activate your, your camera as well? Can you turn on your camera, please? Okay. Uh, no, I. <clears throat> I think. Otherwise, just keep going, anyway, please. We can, we, can, we can go to the actual questions. Questions. Right. So Gonzalo wants, Gonzalo wants a few things. One of them is what about is what about the uh, uh, and ability uh, that uh, right. uh, press um, um, other mechanisms of peroxidation. Uh, uh, Gonzalo is back. Gonzalo is back. I'm sorry. Gonzalo is back there. Yeah. Oh, there he is. All right, all right. So um, yeah. about the, about the first yeah. one. Um, so, so the answer is yes. However, uh, theologically speaking, this is not a channel where uh, that we ever see rafts. This is a cryotic channel. Um, it, it, you know, it's uh, present 
in archaea, uh, U bacteria, and actually plants. So maybe in plants we have uh, lipid rafts uh, as, as we know them. But to answer more specifically the generality of, the, of that possibility, in fact, yes, um, mechanosense channels can, can actually uh, associate, associate with uh, two-dimensional uh, segregations of, of, of decompositions. And this is an and the and the directed by 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 PUFAS. Uh, this is this is this is not not my work. And let me give advert advertisement to uh, Valeria Vasquez and Julio Cordero, who who are actually this in uh, in a variety of mechanical channels. And not, not only that, only that they found that indeed uh, different different um, PUFAS of different compositions are archidonic. It's, uh, Margic mar mar acids, uh, they have not only import important physiologically relevant co consequences in the function of uh, mechanical mm -hmm. um, systems. Okay. So now, now you, the, the third part, part, go ahead. Yeah, the cytoskeleton, because yes, yes. sometimes you have the cytoskeleton attached to the channel and in vivo. Well, when you have done this, you will you will not have that problem, right? Or if you have liposomes, etc. That's right. But in vivo, so how can you have some information about the contribution of the bilayer and right. the cytoskeleton? In those? Right. So the, the cytoskeleton does a role in a, a different type of mechanosense channel, and that um, uh, that's called not C. Um, which is critical in mechanical sensation in arthropods and insects and other invertebrates. Um, but in this case, the reason why we don't think the cytoskeleton plays a role is twofold. If you do uh, basic functional measurements, electrophysiological experiments, um, in, in as intact area as you can, which would be, be that as so a live sphere. Um, the functional effects or the function, functional properties of this, this channels and MSCS are, are identical as those who <clears throat> by uh, uh, reconstruct back into our artificial bi bilayer. Only need in order to <clears throat> gate the, the channel, you, know, you own a bilayer. You do not, not need, need a cytokine cyt cyt element. Having said that, again, again prokaryotic system. So experiments have been done by a number of groups. Uh, you take PSO, which, which is a mini eukaryotic um, sort of soft touch proprioception type mechanism. Um, and in that, that case, again, the, the final behavior in this is, is quite similar, similar to that of purified and, and substituted in lipid layers. So we don't think that the, such, such a plays a direct direct role. Having said that, there been recent experiments, experiments showed that the cytoskeleton plays a, a fundamental mental role in corralling, corralling in modulating the spread, spread the tension changes or, or the uh, mechanical activation, the mechanical, mechanical activity. And so think of it as it is a, um, a network, network underneath the membrane that doesn't allow uh, uh, under propagation of, of like a fourth wave, wave to all parts of the membrane. They are corralled by, by these networks of cytoskeletal elements. Um, yeah, so that's, that's as far as we know. Okay, thank you, Eduardo. It's very good to see you. Likewise, yeah.